Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Okay then, your first three months as an Etsy seller, how to do it right. This guide is exactly what I teach my clients that come to me and they want to build and grow Etsy stores. So it's the essential steps that you've got to take to make sure that your store has every chance of starting to make sales in the first 190 to 100 days of your store's life. Please try to follow every point and make these adjustments if you're a new seller. Um, and if you haven't done these points, please try to do them. Let's get into it. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, part one is before you open. So before you open your Etsy store, the main thing I want you to think about is committing to three months of daily activity in your store. Now, you might say, what's the big deal about this? But more and more new Etsy sellers want to use Etsy as a side hustle, or they want to, um, you know, add extra income to their life. And this doesn't sit too well with how Etsy functions. You need to be constantly active in your Etsy store. So during the first three months, what I'd like you to be able to commit to is a minimum of one hour per day of activity in your store. And that's every day, including weekends if possible. Because as you're gonna see later on in this video, there are several es essential steps that you just have to do to give you every chance of success. So having this plan of committing to activity every day for 90 days, 100 days, and then hopefully, once you've done that, you can continue with this level of activity all the way through the first year of your store's life. The more active you are in your store, the more listings that you create, the more edits you make, the more positive changes you bring to your store. Simply, the more attention Etsy's got to pay to your store. Remember, if you're just adding items sporadically here and there, you're not committing to daily activity, Etsy and the algorithm doesn't have to come back to your store to recheck it. But if you're acting daily and you're making changes, every time you click publish on a listing, Etsy's got to come back and see what you've done and it logs everything that you do. So this is really, really good advice for the th first three months. Daily activity in your store uh, and prepare for three months of at least one hour a day. Okay. Okay, part two in this guide is choosing your niche. And this is something that loads of you have asked me to do um, some content on, so it fits very well into this guide. So when you're choosing a niche, the very first thing you need to decide for yourself is are you going to go for seasonality or are you going to go for evergreen niches and my advice to you is to go for evergreen niches so evergreen simply means items that sell all year round okay it's very very important that anyone can buy your items any time of the year and they you know they're in demand at any time of the year now, having said that, we also want to make sure that your items that sell evergreen all year round also rise in demand at Christmas. So what I'm talking about here is giftability. So if your items sell all year round but have giftability, i.e. someone would want to buy them from you, from you, buy the item from you and then send it to somebody else, that is giftability. And if you can combine that, with the evergreen side of your products and get increased demand at Christmas. That is where you need to aim. So evergreen and giftable at Christmas to get those, get those sales from the Christmas traffic that comes every year to Etsy. Um, the second thing with your niche, I'm going through step by step to give you parameters for your niche and then I'm going to give you some uh, niche examples at the end of this, uh, at the end of this part two. So Another parameter I need you to consider is to make sure that whatever it is you sell is in the $10 to $50 price range, primarily. So it doesn't mean you can't sell $200 items, $300 items. Yeah, $500, of course you can. But if you go and check Etsy, go and look at stores with 10,000 sales, 20,000 sales, 50,000 sales, 100,000 sales, look at the price ranges they use. 
it's almost always 10 to $50. And with good reason, because 10 to $50 is where all the big purchasing on Etsy goes off. So most buying, gift buying, product buying, people are spending 10, 20, 30, 40, $50. It's, it's the most common purchase price point on Etsy. So make sure you pay close attention to taking care of those price brackets uh, when you start growing your store. So the next thing to do when choosing your niche is to check demand. Now, please, I like to keep this simple. I don't want you to waste time with, with tools that tell you about um, sales volume and so on for you to gauge whether you should start selling something. These tools are highly inaccurate. I'm not going to mention any in particular, but when they talk about 80% accuracy and so on, it's rubbish. It's nowhere near 80%. I'd say 50% is much more uh, realistic in terms of, of their accuracy. Far better to use Etsy. Just go to the Etsy homepage, type in the product that you plan to sell, and then on the left-hand side, you've got filters. Open the filter box, select bestseller, and then you can see how many items pop up that are bestsellers. The more items you see that have the bestseller badge, editor's picks, popular now, that's a really good sign that the niche that you're intending to choose is healthy. You've got to see sellers doing well. It's a simple fact. Yes, they're your competition, but you've got to see it because you need to know that the that the demand is there for you to, to make sales yourself. So make sure you check there is a healthy demand. Now, the next thing that, um, next two things actually I need to mention, are to do with producing your items. So number one in this bit is make sure that you can produce lots of items fairly quickly. So I'm gonna talk about later listing, so how you're gonna list your items. Make sure you're able to produce items fairly quickly. You don't want to take a week to make one item. That doesn't sit well with the way Etsy works and how you have to manage and grow your store to make sales. So you want to be able to make an item fairly quickly. If it's a digital item, 20 minutes, half an hour. If it's a physical item, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, maybe a couple of hours, depending on the price of the item that you're selling. So bear that in mind when you're choosing your niche. You don't want to be stuck taking three, four days a week to make an item. That is going to absolutely kill your chances of getting growth and sales. The second piece to this is when you are making your products or designing or whatever it is you're doing, have a low dependency on others. So don't be dependent on four suppliers, five suppliers or three or four designers to put the product together. Keep the barriers to getting the product in your store as low as you possibly can. You don't want interference, you don't want problems getting in your way because you've got to grow your store and build because as you build and grow your store, you're gonna to start to get more traffic into your store and more traffic means more sales, it's that simple. So low dependency on others is very, very important. The next thing to consider is, are you going to do a digital store or a physical store or both? So digital stores are, very easy to set up because there's no product, physical product, there's no supply line, there's no components you've got to put together. The only thing you've got to do is design. You've got to design and if you need uh, raw image files and so on to make the designs, you've got to source those. But um, your key time consuming piece of this for a digital, digital store, as I've mentioned in other videos, is design time. So remember that as you grow a digital store, you are going to quickly find out that design is your number one problem. Because it's all very well listing 10 items, but when you've got to get to 100, that's tough. And you either you or someone that you employ will have to do those designs. 
If it's a physical store, you've got to think about making your products and how many you can make. Like I've said, you've got to get a, a, a process going, a chain going, a production line, if you like, to be able to make the products and um, start to grow your store. So you need to think about digital, physical, or both in your store. I would not, well, if you've got the choice at the beginning of opening your store, choose one or the other. I wouldn't go mixed in the middle. Focus on physical products, focus on digital products. Um, that, I'm not saying you can't mix them, but it's cleaner for Etsy to understand what your store is about in terms of building quality score, if you're digital or physical, rather than mixing both. Choose one or the other. Um, the last thing that I would say is to consider if you are limited in your time, you're limited with money and resources and so on, then strongly consider print on demand, but make sure that you really, really excel in your designs. Look, print on demand basically takes away the physical part of the business from you. So if the physical part of the business is taken away from you and you don't have to do it, well, then it means your designs have got to be really, really good. The bulk of the business someone else is doing, you don't even, you don't even, you don't even get involved in all that. So it shows you nowadays in 2023, we've got to make sure our designs are stellar. So if you are time limited, resource limited, print on demand is still a good option, but you've got to make sure um, your designs are, are, are amazing, to be honest with you, to start making regular sales. Okay, so to finish this piece on niches, I'll give you four niche areas that are evergreen niches that you can move into. Remember, these have all got competition. So expect to see lots of other people selling in them. But the reason why I'm saying them is simply because if you take care of the quality of your business, you take care of your products, you take care of your photography and video and everything about your store and make it decent, you will start to make inroads into that niche and make sales. So the four niches that um, I, I would happily recommend to you are pets, professions, home decor and jewellery. Pets, professions, home decor, jewellery. There's loads more, but they are just solid evergreen niches that are in demand on Etsy. So the almost 100 million customers on Etsy are looking for this stuff. So they are very good areas to move into. And, you know, uh, 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 as long as your store is good quality, um, you, you will start to make sales. OK, let's move on. Right then, part three in this guide is a 100 item listing plan. Now, I know you guys have heard me talk about this a lot, but I'm gonna go into more detail to tell you actually how to do it. So I say to you all the time, you know, list one item a day and so on, but let me give you a bit more detail on how I would like you to do this to maximize your chances of success in these first three to four months. So what you want to do when you do your 100 listing plan is recognize, first of all, well, that's 100 days. So you're going to be listing one item a day for 100 days, which is well over three months. So what I advise you to do, and this is a mistake that lots of sellers make, is don't go and design 100 items. Don't go and make 100 pieces of jewelry, rings, necklaces, earrings. Don't go and, you know, draw a hundred pieces of art. No, that's a big, big mistake. The temptation is there to do it so that you can say, oh, I've done it, it's ready, I can just start listing. No, don't do that. Just do the first 20 or so designs, products, whatever it is you're going to do. Make the first 20. Then when you're ready, you commit to pushing the listings into your store. So once you start, once you start with those first 20, you're going to go through the 20 and continue on to 100. But critically, if you design 20 and push those into your store, that gives you 20 days to then design the next batch or make the next set of 20 products. And critically, you can see what is starting to work as you push these batches of products into your store. So the first 20 go in, not much is gonna happen, to be honest with you, as you put the first 20 in, you might make a sale, but you know, you just started. But then when you put the next 20 in, you move from 20 to 40, and you get the next 20 uh, products ready. 
As you do this, you're into 40 days. So you're over a month now and you can start to get data. You can start to see what's going on in your store. You can start to see what customers are looking at most, what is grabbing their attention. You might have made a sale or two at this point and now you're starting to get an idea of what's working. So as you move to the next set of 20, you can start to focus on this data. You can use it. This is how you make more sales on Etsy. It's basic um, business common sense. Make more of what's working and ditch what doesn't work. But lots of people forget this. They don't pay enough attention. So list in batches of 20, prep list, prep list, and pay attention to what's working. And then by the time you get to 100 listings, the point of this exercise is to prove viability for what you're doing. Because when you get to 100 products, I'm telling you straight, you should be selling. You should be selling. You should have 10, 15 sales, maybe 20 sales, something like that, if you've done everything right. You're not going to have loads of sales, but after sort of three or four months in your store, you should be making sales. And that tells you you're doing, you're basically doing things right. If you're not selling, there is an issue. And fundamentally, it usually falls into two camps. People don't want to buy your stuff, so you haven't done your research, you haven't looked into what's working, or your photography and video is terrible and people just aren't clicking on your stuff because it's not appealing when uh, people are looking in, in search and non-search areas of Etsy for your items. Okay, so this next tip is absolutely critical and you only get one chance to do it. So don't miss this opportunity. When you start listing, make sure you use something called category command. Category command is the process of, you know, let's say you had six sections in your store. So you have a jewellery store and you've got six sections. You grow each item section at the same speed. Because if you grow the item sections at the same speed, that's the only way you can truly tell where the customer demand is. And hardly anybody does this. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen a store that does good category command. And you can only do it once when you first open. But by doing it, you can see which section, which product type in your store is performing best and make more of that product. For example, if it's jewellery, necklaces might be selling well, but earrings, not so much. Well, very quickly, you're going to see, because category command is being used, which section is truly um, uh, in demand from the customers, which is absolutely vital. Okay, so another thing that you've got to make sure you get right is photography and video. This is absolutely essential now. So when I talk about photography and video, I want you to take bright, clear, uncluttered, nicely contrasting photos of your products. What I mean by that is if you've got a dark product, then you have a nicely contrasting light background. If you've got a light product, conversely, the background will be darker. Keep it simple, no cluttering, no items you know, in the shot that could confuse people or make people think, oh, am I getting this item? Am I getting this item? No, keep it very simple and straightforward with your photography and make sure you tell the full story to the customer. So product front and center, back of the product, inside the product. If it's a bag, for example, one of the most common mistakes I see people do with bags, they don't show the inside of the bag. The customer wants to see in the bag. They want to see the zips and all that good stuff. Think about what you want to see as a buyer when you're doing your photography. Video. Loads of sellers still don't do video. And it, and it baffles me. Even if you're print on demand, you can do video now because there's sites like Placeit where you can put your product designs onto, onto products, uh, video, video models. Uh, there's no excuse not to do video now. If you're not doing video in 2023 on Etsy, you are losing conversion. Video listings convert much better than non-video listings. And the piece of advice I give all my clients when I talk about video and the piece of advice I'll give you now, show the product in use. This is critical. So many sellers get this wrong. Show the product in use. So if it's a necklace, then you have a camera, a phone, whatever it is, you only need a phone, nothing, nothing professional, nothing amazing. You show someone putting the necklace on, you pan in to the, ne to the neckline to show the necklace, you pan away 
Uh, maybe that maybe the model just moves the, the 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 necklace to show some sparkle. Job done. Just show the product in use. I see uh, jewelry stores with earrings going round on teacups and stuff, or revolving round on a platter in a light box. That's awful. The customer wants to see the item in use, and so many people get this wrong. Videos in every listing and show the product in use. So that is the listing plan side of it. Let's move on to part four. Okay, part four of this guide is something that's not talked about enough on YouTube about Etsy, and that is opening your store. So what happens when you open your store? You know, what can you expect? Um, what pieces of information do you need to make sure that these first three months go as smoothly as possible? Let's get into the various um, pieces I want to talk about in this section. So the first thing is a piece of housekeeping, and I really want you to pay attention to this. When you open your store, you will list an item, and then you're going to fill out your banking details. Now, make sure the banking details on file at your bank exactly match the banking details in your Etsy account. If they don't exactly match, and I mean down to the letter, Etsy will suspend your store. So make sure these two things are an exact match. Lots of people don't know this, lots of people make mistakes and then they think, oh, why has my store been suspended? This is one of the prime reasons why Etsy stores get suspended. <clears throat> okay, so next thing is fill out your five required shop sections that Etsy needs you to fill out. So these make your store look trustworthy. So many sellers either don't do them all, don't bother or do them, but they look you know, really poor quality. Make sure these five shop sections are, are done to a high, high standard. Number one is your seller icon, that's the picture of you. Number two is your shop icon, the picture of your shop, the brand image that you're going to use. Number three is your shop announcement, so make sure you tell people succinctly and concisely what you do. Number four is your shop policies. I'd advise you, if you possibly can, to use Etsy's policies. Obviously, you can use your own, but it is preferable and more trustworthy, certainly from Etsy's side, if you use their policies. And number five, this is something that so many sellers get wrong, the about page. So when you do your about page, you've got three components you've got to put in there. A description of what you do. So go to town here, get passionate, tell people why you do what you do, your influences, all the good stuff about your business here is where you shout about it. Not product descriptions, it's the about page. Number two, photos. Put photos in to support your brand. You know, process shots of you making your stuff. Um, uh, photos of the building that you work in, you know, um, uh, raw components, just really tell a story about what you do, show why you are so good at what you do. And the third component is a video. Put a brand video in. So basically like the photos, but in video form. Tell the story of your business. This is vital. Customers on Etsy really do look at this stuff and they care about what they're buying and they will get attached to you and your store and what you sell more readily when you've got this lovely about page. So please do that, it's, um, it's really important. So something that I want to point out, and this is definitely not talked about a lot at all, is certainly in the first two to four weeks, expect low traffic, okay? Nothing's wrong, not much is gonna happen. All right, you're just going to start listing, doing your processes in your store. Don't expect much to happen. I see so many sellers in YouTube. I've been on Etsy two weeks and not made a sale. It's like, are you serious? Of course, you're not going to make a sale in two weeks. Don't be surprised if you don't. The first two to four weeks are just not, I mean, obviously you are going to look for sales. That's a natural instinct to do so. But just try to remember not much is going to happen. And your goal and job is just to list, list, list. So the first two to, four, two to four weeks, low activity in terms of sales. It's entirely normal. Okay, so I'll touch on SEO here. Um, SEO is at its most important when you're a new store. So you do need to pay some time and attention to SEO. Rather than me bore you to death and explain it in this video, 
go and watch my Etsy SEO in 10 minutes video. So just type into YouTube Etsy SEO in 10 minutes or find it in my channel. That explains everything you need to know. Thousands and thousands of people have watched that video and got so much value from it. As far as SEO goes, just watch that video and it literally teaches you in 10 minutes how to do it. It's not difficult and straightforward. So one more thing, actually two more things with opening, um, when you open your store. First one is really obvious, but don't use copyright or trademark items in your store. Don't sell them, don't talk about them, don't photograph them, your store will get suspended. So avoid, even though the temptation is there to use the keywords or copy something that's famous, please don't do it, you'll end up in a world of trouble, it's not worth it, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is, when you start, don't use Etsy ads and opt out of off-site ads. So don't waste your time with Etsy ads to start with. You've got to get going. You've got to see what works. You've got to improve your photography, your video. You've got to, you've kind of got to know your way around your store and start to see what's working before you start throwing money into Etsy ads, which is incredibly difficult to make money from. And you don't want to do it until you've really settled down with what you're doing and got a good idea of the standards needed when it comes to ads. You, 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 you just gotta get everything right before you start using them. So certainly in the four, first three to four months, I wouldn't use Etsy ads and opt out of op offsite ads because they're gonna take 15% of the total selling price of your sale if you do make sales from offsite ads. So I would opt out until you get to $10,000 total sales, then you don't have a choice, you've gotta go into it. But whilst you've got the choice, keep more of the money you make in your pocket and get good at what you do in your store before you start any forms of advertising. I think that's absolutely critical. So don't use Etsy ads and make sure that you don't use offsite ads until such time comes that you make $10,000 in your store. Okay, part five of my guide here is conclusions. So these are basic but solid tips and recapping of what I've spoken about earlier in the video. The first one, I can't stress it enough, is you've got to be patient with the growth of your store. Sure, stores occasionally start to sell and they do really well very quickly, but that is a massive exception to the rule. So remember, I've worked on thousands and thousands of Etsy stores with my clients and I've, and I've worked with new stores. The first two to four weeks, not much is going to happen. You've got to be prepared for that. You might make a sale or two, but not much is going to happen. So be prepared to move past this first two to four weeks and get towards sort of 30, 40, 50, 60 items. When you get to there, things, if you've done everything right, will start to happen. First month, not much is going to happen. Be ready for that. Um, as an offshoot to that, as you're growing your store in the first two weeks, three weeks, month, six weeks, pay attention to what's working. So look at the data coming into your store. Look at the visits to your, to your items. You might have made a couple of sales by month two. Well, start to make more of the items that are starting to work. You'll clearly see what's working in your store and your shop manager. Pay attention to this data. So many people just keep making, keep making. Yes, keep making and listing stuff, but make more of what's working. Get that quality score, get those sales coming in and get that visibility up as quick as you can. Pay attention to what's working right from the start. Okay, the final two pieces in my conclusion are times of the year and what to expect. So first of all, summer on Etsy, June, July, August, it is slow. So I get sellers coming to me all the time in June and July. What's happened to my store? I was making sales in April, May, and now it's gone dead, I'm not selling. That's totally normal. June, July, and August on Etsy, it's like a desert. It gets so quiet because people aren't enjoying themselves, doing other things, anything but buying stuff on Etsy. So every year, the summer slowdown on Etsy is June, July, August. Be ready for it and expect it because the first time you experience it, 
especially after making sales in the spring, you think something's wrong with, with your store. There's nothing wrong. It's just the summer slowdown. So be ready for that. On the flip side of that is Q4. So let me be clear. Here's another fact you might not know. In Q4 on Etsy, October, November, December, if you've done your shop setup and build right, you will make more sales in October, November, December than the rest of the entire year combined. That's how big Q4 and Christmas is on Etsy. It's massive. So be prepared for it. What I'm saying is you've got to get ready. Now is the time to build and grow your store. Use everything I've taught you today to get you going. And you're going to prepare for Q4. So make sure you've got your supplies. Make sure you've got your designs. Make sure the store has been built and grown to a decent size with decent inventory um, for people to buy because it goes crazy in October, November, December on Etsy. You know, sales just quadruple, quintuple in size. They just balloon because people are piling onto Etsy um, to, to buy stuff for Christmas. And remember, make sure you are personalizable and giftable. Make sure you offer personalized options. Everybody wants personalized stuff at Christmas. If you can combine that with being giftable. So offer gift wrapping as a service. People pay for it. Personalization, people pay for it. You join these two things together. It puts rocket fuel under your store at Christmas time. So please try to do those things. Above all, with this journey, enjoy it. Enjoy what you're doing. Um, enjoy the, the process of doing all this stuff. This shouldn't be a bind. It shouldn't be tedious. It should be fun and enjoyable. If it isn't fun and enjoyable overall, you're not hitting the mark with what you should be doing in your Etsy store. So make sure you're passionate and you feel good and you feel motivated about what you do when you start this brand new store. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this guide. I think it's like 25, 30 minutes long. It's quite a long one. Thank you for getting to the end of this video. Put in the comments what you thought about this. Any questions about what I've said? Are you opening an, an, a new Etsy store? Put your new Etsy store in my comments. Let me have a look at it. Tell me how your journey's going. I love to hear from you. As you know, I always answer every comment. Look for all my videos. Everything's answered. So I will continue to do that. And I look forward to finding you in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.